Hey, Joe, how are you? Good, Doug, how are you? Good, thank you. Hi, Brian, hi, Lynn. Hi, Doug, how are you? Good, thank you. Hey, Wayne. Good evening. Good evening, all, good evening. Hi, Wayne. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Hey, Phil. Hello. When are we going to start meeting in person, Joe? <laughs> we, we can meet at Phil's house. I saw Mark at uh, the farmer's market. I, I thought he was someone else. He's like, finally, it's like, it's fun. <laughs> I'm like, dude, like, we never get to see each other in person. It's only from the neck up. I know. Like I didn't realize how he was like seven feet tall. <laughs> I'm just short, actually. That's really what it is. I saw Jason at the uh, hardware, hardware store. That's hardware. That's right. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. Live in person, Wayne for real. All right, well, Lynn, I made you co-host. Are you ready to get started? We have a quorum, so why not? Okay, hold on. We have a quick um, slideshow tonight, as I'm sure you guys could tell from, um, from the meeting material that I sent out, but we didn't wanna lose this opportunity to provide you an update on some of the design issues. Um, so our agenda is brief um, for administrative actions. We have a review of the August 11th Permanent Building Committee SBC meeting minutes. And then I'm gonna turn it over to SMMA to give you an update on the site, the building and building systems. And then we'll talk a little bit at the end about uh, what's coming up in terms of meetings and the schematic design process. Um, so first on the agenda is- uh, First on the review. agenda, is there, is there any public participation? Sorry. Hearing none, okay, Lynn. Okay, uh, next on the agenda then is the review and approval of the August 21st, 2022 Permanent Building School Building Committee meeting minutes. I'm going to have a motion. Did, was there really a move uh, meeting on a Sunday? Is it, a, is it Sunday? Oh, August. August 11th. Sorry about that. OK. <laughs> With the correct date, then I'll yes. make a motion the to approve. minutes do have the correct date. It's just the PowerPoint. All right, motion, John, motion, motion to approve the minutes from the August 11th uh, meeting. Is there a second? I'll, uh, I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, is there any objection to approving the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Okay, okay and then, um, Joe, can you um, give, is Ooh. it Bri Brian That'd or? Me. Yes, please. Thank you, Joe. Okay, hopefully you're seeing this correctly with just one slide with the agenda. Have a uh, split. Uh, you've got the agenda on the left and then the next slide in to the right. Let me try that again. Not giving me better options.
Okay, sorry about this. I'm gonna try that again. It's combining screens. Um, let me think here. Should I try it, Ryan, if I get the host? If you, yeah, if you could. Ability. Okay. Uh, Joe, if you don't mind. I thought Brian was the sure bet. <laughs> With technology what it is today, you never know. Oh, this is true. All right, let's give this a try. How's that look looking? Looks good. Hey, all Can right. Can you do a full screen share? Yep. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. Great. Um, so tonight you you have uh, myself, Brian, and Lana Prokopitz are mechanical engineer, um, and um, as Lynn has already indicated, we intend for this to be a pretty brief meeting um, with some key updates. Uh, so with that, um, we wanted to sh sort of share with you all where we are on the journey towards selecting a mechanical system for the high school. And um, as I said, the uh, to, to start at the journey was, uh, you know, way back in, in the study phase. And um, the way we've been working with you all is, is the construction of focus groups, we've, um, uh, which are comprised of, in this case, um, experts in sustainability as well as um, systems. So DPW, Tim O'Brien, members from WESC, uh, Wakefield Environmental Sustainability Committee. Um, and so we've been pretty uh, regularly meeting through the study phase. Um, we had three focus group meetings and um, as well as an individual meeting with WESC. And we did have a community forum on St. Patrick's Day and that focused on code and um, sustainability opportunities um, as, as well as the systems. And so now we are in schematic design. We've got our selected option and we're digging into a lot more detail. And so we did pick up again with a focus group meeting uh, earlier this month. And what became pretty clear to us at that meeting was that um, Tim O'Brien and um, DPW uh, folks really needed a bit more detail. Um, and we were also able to provide, we were not able to orchestrate a meeting with Cambridge facilities who operate an all electric geothermal system. However, we did get um, answers to several questions that we had and those were provided to uh, the attendees of that meeting. Um, but what really what came out of that it was a need for uh, a more intensive um, deep dive into systems options with DPW and Tim O'Brien. So that occurred on the 16th. Um, and what came out of that was um, a, a real comfort level um, by that group um, who will be the most uh, intimately involved with maintaining systems um, to, to discard the concept of looking at a, a fossil fuel option. So their recommendation, and, and we concur, was to move forward with really just focusing on all electric um, options for the mechanical system. Um, right after that, we had a great meeting with um, the municipal um, light and gas, gas and light department, and got a lot more detail about the energy park, which also sort of helped um, bolster this concept of focusing on all electric. And um, I think where we are today, that's the 25th, is we'd like to um, uh, ask for your concurrence to model the three systems that are listed here in the life cycle cost analysis. So a geothermal all electric, air source all electric, as well as a, a hybrid of, of the, those two, but also an all electric system. We have been carrying a fossil fuel option for quite some time as, as something to model for comparison's sake, um, but it's becoming increasingly more clear to us that um, not only from the town side, the municipal, municipal electric department has been clear from day one 
the changing codes, uh, the fact that we will have to go to uh, mass uh, EPA for permitting uh, associated with the relocation of Hemlock Road. They're gonna take a, a, a very close look at this and really push us uh, closer and closer to all electric. That um, That's, that's um, what we are recommending with, um, along with DPW and with um, Tim O'Brien to model these three systems moving forward. I will also say their number one preference, meaning uh, DPW and Tim, was a geothermal option. So um, before we get to that decision, because that decision does require testing and a, a fairly substantial investment in test wells, um, we can uh, give you a better sense of overall costs and savings once we get that LCCA data in front of you. So the next steps beyond that community forum, we'll get input from the community next Wednesday, get their um, points of view. Um, but if we can proceed with modeling the systems that we've outlined here, we should be able to get that data to you to help uh, again decide if going towards geothermal, um, which does require uh, an investment in testing, does make some sense. So um, that's what the next couple of weeks look like um, here. I see Chip has his hand raised. I think that might be the first time I've ever done that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would just, yeah, I just mimic everything you said, having been involved in those meetings, that certainly all electric is the direction we want to go. And the difference between geothermal and air source or a variation, but, Helen, what I, I just want to keep reiterating that not only do we want the LCCA data, we also want to know the reality data or the logistical data of where a geothermal grid can go before we start thinking about testing, right? Absolutely. It, it, is it a possibility? So along with the LCAA, mm -hmm. is it feasible, right? right. And right. logistically, is it feasible? So those are the two pieces to determine whether we move forward at looking at that. Right, exactly. And um, Lana has already started crunching numbers and looking at grids. Um, so that piece is also um, in process. Um, so yes, it is definitely a, a, a complicated uh, set of decisions to be made um, that require a lot of um, data. And so I do also think that logistically we, um, have talked to Lynn about this is getting um, getting a meeting with Bond Brothers and talking about you know where the field would go, how that would impact what would happen first um, when constructing the new building. And and Chip, I think that the hybrid, the number three option there, also provides the opportunity to make uh, a potential geothermal more feasible uh, because it would have to be a phased system. Okay, I, I don't know anything about the very the the third option, so that's great to look at. And I just yes. timing wise to make a decision on nine eight and go to cost estimating on nine nine, will we be able to give them enough information at that time to actually do some real careful estimating? I do think we will be able to. Yes. Okay, and. When are you hoping to get the bond meeting? I think we're looking at next week. I guess you'd have to. to... <laughs> I know. We <laughs> are running to, out of weeks. Helen, you're one round out of weeks. Unless you I, know, I know, I know. Stretch and it a little bit. Yeah. Okay, yes, great. Indeed. Yes. Thank you. I it's think that gives everybody a, a real good understanding of what you guys have been doing on this phase. And uh, I just want to say WGMLD has really stepped up to the plate. And, I'm excited about this, uh, the capability that they're doing and what they're, you know, the battery park and what it helps not only for this project, but for the town and everything else. So um, they've come a long way in my estimation to, to helping us make a decision. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Phil? Hey, thanks, a uh, couple can I get some definitions? Uh, battery park, energy park. What 
exactly is that? I'm gonna I'm gonna bat that over to Lana. <laughs> See if you can give a good uh, example or a good explanation. So um, basically, it's a group of uh, large scale batteries that will store store electrical energy, and those batteries will be um, sized um, for the peak load for all um, in, uh, recipients of that future load. Um, the, the battery park will be organized uh, just off the road, and uh, it will provide um, um, raceways underground to the building that we'll be, we'll be constructing. Uh, they will come to the property line, and then from that point, we will pick up um, all the wires and all distribution in the building. So what they are going to do is they are going to provide all electrical supply to the building. They are also um, uh, told us that they will pick up uh, the emergency generator capacity. And uh, within one hour, if in case the electricity uh, shuts down, they will be able to switch the building to full electrical supply in case of emergency, which is, is uh, it's a great service. What's powering the batteries? That that we, we didn't get that that information yet. That's oh. an question for them. Where no, what what what's powering the so there's solar grids, both. So uh, we got to account for the solar grid array on the site plan now with the battery power. No, or no, no, all on roof, all roof, all roof access, rooftop. Um, okay. So so there's two. Phil, this is in combination with the Vogue. So they need to do that. They're doing this already for the Vogue, which is a year ahead of us. So what they gave the Vogue is basically what they're giving to us as well. And they're using, so we already had to prepare the roof for solar, right? That's part of what MSBA makes you do. So given that they're now, we don't have to supply, they're going to supply and maintain the solar array on our roofs. So they'll have one on they'll have one up on um, the Vogue and they'll have as much square footage as they can gain on us. If the batteries are totally full, the extra power will go back to the grid. The other thing that they didn't mention is that they're applying for a grant uh, on the educational side of things to be able to put up monitors and TV screens in the, in the schools to be able to tell people, you know, how much of the power is being provided by the solar array, you know, energy use, all that type of stuff. Um, so it was when they, so that's what the, the pack is and, and all the power. So the other thing that they're doing is all the electrical on both sites is going underground. So there'll be no more electrical lines going up Hemlock Road. All of that will be underground. So as soon as we can tell them what is happening with Hemlock, then they'll be able to start. And this, uh, they're hoping to go to town meeting in the fall uh, to be able to get permission uh, to get an easement for the acre of land they need just north of Landrigan on the right side of Hemlock to create this battery park. Okay, so we're going to be relying on that town vote for the, that plan to work in some way, but we'll, Co correct. that's a worry for the future. Okay, that's, uh, thank you. I have a couple questions. So is there like a log, is there like a log for like questions and answers of all the focus group? You said there were some good questions and you responded. Have you, is there like a document that I, you could read all those questions that came in or how were they responded to? Uh, the questions from the Cambridge the mechanical meetings. Yeah, I guess from the mechanical sure, meeting, you had mentioned at some point in yeah. your when we were talking about this timeline that there was some questions and answers. Yeah, I think there's there's two pieces to that. Um, we do have minutes from every meeting, so I think what we okay. can do is put those all into a folder and share it with everyone. Um, and then there was a specific document I think I was that maybe you are referring to um, that was a Q&A with the Cambridge facilities. Maybe the Cambridge facilities. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Can you remind? Put, put okay, that out sorry. There. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Uh, can you remind the town when you met with the town and DPW, what was there? Did they have a preference on these options or did, is it too early for them to say any sort of preference for any of these electric options? Uh, I met with them on uh, August 16th. 
and they preferred a geothermal option. Geothermal, okay. And then with the 100,000 for the geothermal, that's on 9.8, but then you have to go to cost estimating. When does that 100,000 get spent? Like you have to get an estimate for geothermal before we even know if it's possible or how does that timeline work with those two notches on that uh, timeline there? So the first, first date is 8.31. Uh, this is where we are expecting to get results from LCCA calculations. That, that will give us a first indication of, or, of uh, where we stand with the price on the geothermal system. And then if it's, we see it's feasible moving forward, we will schedule um, one or two test wells, and that will be uh, the estimated price that of 100000 Got it. Okay. And then... Um... If it ever gets to that point, are we allowed to go to that Belmont site again, Chip? I think there was a tour back during the winter of some high schools, and I think Belmont has a good geothermal or one of them. And I didn't get to go on that tour, but would they, we ever have a chance of seeing what these systems look like again, or was that our one and only? So there, no, we could certainly go back to Belmont, but there's there there's actually not a whole lot to look at because it's all underground. These well, I mean, literally, you know, you're talking about this geothermal. Yeah, like yeah, there's all the pipes and the mechanicals in the room that you have to that control all those stuff. Correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. It's so, either an air source system or a geothermal. Geo. Okay. So we don't know which system yet we, we would be looking at in terms of uh, this geothermal, do we? Is it an air source geothermal? Uh, no. So, so it's one or the other. It's right. one or the other because it's all in the ground. Got it. Yeah, uh, ge geothermal will be water source heat pumps. Water. Uh, okay. VRF, sorry. Water source VRF. Yeah, just to add to chips, things to look into the logistics of where it's going to go. But financially, can the town afford to maintain a geothermal system? Uh, there's a ton of maintenance on them. They do need attention and uh, it's going to add a whole new line item. So I know the DPW probably knows that, but just it, it's something to consider when looking at these options is future maintenance and operations of it, not just initial. So I right, hope and that's discussed. and that's what the LCCA is. It's a life cost analysis. Okay, so that's, that's the long range over time. Yeah, that's the LCCA. So that's to me, Phil. Right. That's what I want to see first. Then second, the feasibility. Then determine whether it even makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Sorry for so many questions. I couldn't make the meeting uh, Monday morning, but uh, thanks. Uh, can yeah. I get back to you about the battery park? So uh, one thing that I wanted to add is that um, photovoltaic panels uh, that the um, utility company is expecting um, to install at the school, um, you know, they hope that they, they will cover uh, to a certain extent the consumption um, of electricity in the school. Uh, but in any case, um, even if they don't get any um, extra or, you know, uh, remaining uh, electricity from the PV panels to the battery park, uh, they are um, there to provide uninterrupted power supply in any case. That's important to understand that the battery is there and they are expecting some you know, PV panels feedback, but they are behind the uninterrupted power supply and emergency supply. Green. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, just a uh, quick question. Is the Vogue School going geothermal? It's, it's an air source. Is the vocational school going geothermal? It's no, an air, air source, source, not air ground source. source. It's an we're air going, source system. We're, we're going all, all electric, all electric. I know, I understand that. I know electricity, yeah. but, but yeah. Our, our goal is to go all electric. Now, I was at the tour of Belmont. And they had like 400, maybe 300 and some odd wells in the, in, in, in the football field. Mm -hmm. I just, I hope we're aware our facilities department is aware of the complexities of a whole new system like this. And it, 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 I, I, I don't know, I'm just amazed that, uh, is the light department on board? He, I, I missed a meeting, I couldn't make the meeting, I was working, um, I think it was Monday, whenever the meeting was in the morning. Um, I think- well, like Wayne, Wayne, the light department doesn't care whether it's, whether the equipment is run geothermally or from air source. No, no, is, is the light, the is, oh, thank you, Chip. Thank you, Chip. Is yeah. the light department going to supply uh, emergency backup power? Yeah, they'll, they'll, they have the generator. So 
actually by them, the generator is that battery pack. So there they'll have a generator, which means we don't have to have one. So there's zero fossil fuel at this site. Correct. All right, any other questions? I guess so, no, that's it. All right, anybody else? Good the, questions. The, yes. the generator will be fossil fuel, right? I would imagine. Uh, the generator is, it, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. the backup generator is. It's, it's, it's a gas fired uh, emerging. Just a fire, yeah. yeah. So there is fossil fuel. No, it's okay. actually up at, not on, not on the school site. It will be at the WMGLD battery park site. No, I understand that, but it will be powered by fossil fuel. Has to be. It okay. Be. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes or no. That's a that's yes. a simple answer. All right, Thank Wayne. You. That's enough. Any other questions? Yeesh. All right. Uh, Chip beat me to the punch. He gave uh, most Sorry. of the highlights. It's all right, Chip. <laughs> um, so these were some of the highlights from that meeting with WMGLD. Um, they also noted that they will be providing as they are with uh, Metro Tech, um, some EV charger chargers. So five dual, he dual headed, meaning 10 um, spaces that would have that the student learning opportunities, they've gotten grants for that. And we will be um, setting up monthly coordination meetings with them. Okay. Um, and with that, I can turn it over to Brian and you're gonna have to tell me when to flip the slides. Thanks, Alan, for taking that over. Um, so uh, in terms of a programming process update, um, this is a, a really you know large undertaking at this stage of the project to uh, meet with all the departments, meet with staff, uh, meet with administration and really go through each and every space um, at still somewhat a high level. We will do this all over again in design development at a very fine level uh, that gets into, you know, where you want outlets, what kind of furniture do you like to sit on, those kinds of things. We're not there yet, but we're at the stage of, and in the last uh, sort of rounds of meetings, we've been um, looking at a lot of the little spaces. So. Um, just after the last PBC, we met with um, the principal, two assistant principals, the director of guidance, and one of the nurses. And we went through the admin needs for the main office of the high school. Um, there was a desire uh, by that group to um, look at three different components, um, uh, which are the main high school office, which is by the front door, it provides a secure entrance point uh, and there's a checkpoint coming in. That's where uh, basically once the bell rings, everyone goes through that, uh, that suite. Uh, the principal's office is there, conference room, and then there's a bunch of support space, um, kind of general in nature. Um, the other components of uh, what we typically group as admin uh, are, the student supports, which is uh, the guidance and career center, um, and the assistant principals suite. Um, and uh, those are being treated in three different areas. And there was a desire to put uh, student supports central to where the students are. So that segment um, that Helen was waving over uh, at the joint between the two wings is where you get the career center, uh, where we're looking for a more prominent location of the career center itself along the corridor. Um, the gr dark green areas are special education uh, administration and a conference room. Uh, and each of those suites has its separate entrance. Um, so um, uh, as we go up the plan, you'll see that the uh, assistant principals are, and we're not gonna go there yet, Helen, uh, but um, the assistant principals are on level two, again, in the central location um, so that um, they have a, a strong identity um, and can uh, sort of commandeer the school, uh, not only in a horizontally central position, but in the center floor. So midway between first and third floor. 
Um, hey guys, is it possible to blow this up a little bit, taking out the, you know, the level one plan and the program legend? But sure. If you could. Helen, if you wave over the left bottom corner, uh, <laughs> you should see some tools yeah. popping up there where you okay. can zoom. There you go. Not that much. Ah. Um, but that's okay if yeah, you move so, back and forth as you. Okay. And and Chip, this is still a work in progress. I have to. Yeah, no, you know, I know. It's, it's going to we continue to read be. even. We can't even read a, a label, or I can't. Um, uh, the the real benefit of the meeting was all the information gathering that we did and having more intelligence around where we can and cannot place things, what adjacencies within those spaces work best, um, how they really operate on a day-to-day -day basis. So that was a very productive meeting. Um, we looked at the nurses, we, we confirmed all the program area there. Uh, we talked about educational technology um, uh, with Amy and, and others, um, and uh, also some functional kind of planning considerations about lockers, uh, cafeteria seating, um, the nature of all gender uh, facilities uh, potentially. And those are the beginning of a discussion we wanted to put on uh, folks radar and to have a chance to gather the right uh, groups around each of those topics. We have a meeting tomorrow uh, with uh, Amy, Doug and, and others um, to talk about some of those areas also district offices, which are over to the right. We can zoom in on that, that guy as well. Um, the next uh, uh, iteration of level one will show a little bit more development there that we'll talk about tomorrow. Um, and we'll also talk about uh, special education space throughout the school. So an, another sort of half day packed with um, uh, intelligence gathering. Um, we also uh, met this week with WCAT at the same time uh, as the director of the performing arts program. We had a good huddle about um, how those spaces might work next to each other. Um, it turns out that there's really no functional uh, benefit to sharing of space literally. Um, and so that has actually um, kind of freed us to move the TV uh, studio space and the lab space a little bit more inboard into the school. Uh, um, uh, but there is still a geographic adjacency that is good between uh, the school TV program and the cable station. Um, and it was a productive meeting. There's uh, some work we're still doing with WCAT about right sizing their space and trying to you know, make it as efficient as we possibly can. Uh, I'm meeting again with them tomorrow. Uh, so we're making good progress on a lot of these, um, the small areas that amount to, when you look at it, it's a fairly good sized mass and we're dealing with the site constraints also on that end. So um, a lot going on there. Um, uh, as we um, go uh, further, Helen, if you go to the next slide, um, there's uh, some, some new development as of this week that we're looking at. And you'll notice on the left uh, end of the Southerly Academic Wing, um, we've uh, created sort of a kink at the, fr the front of the school, sort of a, a wrinkle, but it actually straightens out the back of the school and takes, I think, a lot of pressure off of that inside corner um, segment. Um, and a really great benefit of, of this um, development is this corridor that now stretches from the dining commons all the way through the end of the school and becomes a really organized, you know, an organizing feature. It helps with wayfinding, um, becomes sort of a main street on the interior of the academic wing and helps, you know, again, to kind of structure it. So um, we also were looking for a way to break down the mass of that main elevation on, on the arrival side of the building. Um, 
And this helps us to do that. It creates a, a subtle embrace, if you will, as you approach the school. Um, and we've got some imagery of, of that. Um, we are still massaging, you know, to get all of the sizes of rooms and, and make sure everything's accounted for. We just did this today, actually. And, and so we're showing you right hot off the presses. Um, uh, but I think this has got some good potential. Um, as we go further, go up to level two now, uh, we can see how that tracks through and it's really just stacking. So it's a, you know, it's a, it's efficient in terms of a structural system. Um, at the, the front of our media center, the bit in orange there, we're creating a series of bays at the front that could become seating nooks that now look out over the entry area and they, they're animating the front of the building and create um, sort of the other end of the, of the figure there. Um, and a pretty interesting from the outside. Um, uh, otherwise, I think a lot of the plan is similar to what you've seen so far. And we're refining, whittling down the excess uh, circulation space, the yellow areas that connect everything. Um, and we've got some work to do on that still, but making good progress um, up to level three. Um, again, a similar plan tracking through um, with uh, more classrooms on this level, um, really kind of animating it and the, the ability to look into the media center from uh, upper floor. Um, so th those are the plan developments. Um, we also will be meeting over the next two weeks with uh, some focus groups uh, the health wellness and athletics program is one we want to uh, meet before we go for the pricing um, uh, uh, submission. Uh, performing arts has some topics we want to tackle um, and food service and culinary um, so that we get a handle on uh, now that the decision is is in place for the all electric building uh, that we have we're in alignment about how that gets scoped and priced. Um, so that's what we've been up to in terms of the programming and the planning. Um, and I'll take any questions if there are any. Jim? Yeah, Brian, if I missed it, I apologize. Did all the balconies get removed? No, there's still the one, uh, one level down on, on level two which is outside the science classrooms. Okay, just that one, nothing on the other That's side. That's right. Okay, um, and nothing we've made, on the third floor, yeah. Yeah, and we've made the entrance to that on the other side now. So, you know, there's a little flexibility there. You can enter either from the science classroom or from the corridor. You don't have to go through the classroom. Whether that's needed or desired, you know, coming out from the LGI, it could be nice to access that space. Um, you could do half and half where the lower half is, is a classroom, outdoor classroom, and the upper half is more a uh, terrace for functions. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that detail a little bit later on. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Um, I, I have one more slide, which is really just a uh, kind of a preview of, uh, you know, next week we'll be having the community forum. And so, yes, we are working on what does this building look like and, and how are we developing the architecture? These are some snapshots of, of where the modeling is, is now taking us. Um, you can see in this iteration, the, on the lower right is sort of where you would enter the driveway to the school along the front. And you can see the sort of how that, that wall is kind of kicking out toward you. Um, I think that the patterning of the wall is still a little bit um, busy, if you will. It definitely wants to be more orderly as it meets the ground. Uh, that's something we're working on, but we are striving for kind of a unity of the wrapper between the right-hand side and the left where the gym is, and we don't have a lot of windows. You know, How are we letting the pattern look like it's organic to both sides and not you know, pattern A over there and pattern B over there, that it's really one school. Um, and so we're getting there and the media center is taking center stage and announcing the entry. 
and uh, we've carved back the dining commons um, on the lower left uh, to create sort of a porch element. So there's sheltered space outside the doorway um, and still has a view out from the interior out toward the field. Um, so this is, again, a snapshot of where we are and we'll keep working on this. We're working toward that, that meeting to have some compelling imagery. Well, what meeting is what meeting are you going to have the updated elevations? Yeah, so there's a community meeting uh, next Wednesday. On the 31st. That's yeah, right. we'll ha we'll talk about design and we'll talk about sustainability in that one meeting. Um, your loading dock moved to the front, it looks like, from the last time I saw it. I thought last ones I saw showed the loading dock along the side. So it looks like, yeah, you have dock uh, front and front on the end elevation over there it is around the side but you're seeing uh what very large containers would look like sitting there oh i thought in the plan it showed uh spaces going out from the school and if you go back to the level one uh current that one it looked like those were trucks backing straight in towards the front of the property they are uh, that, that's correct yeah yeah so, is it common to have uh, maybe loading docks always get the shaft being out back but like is there a reason like loading docks generally aren't out front of public buildings like this or like i haven't seen a lot so is it just usually you have choice? more space behind the building which we just don't have and we're doing our best to to conceal it and some elements you won't you know are haven't seen yet are potential you know sc screen wall um and landscaping that could help to conceal it, um, uh, yeah. but then you know whether we can push that whole um, gray volume back. You can see where uh, we have a dashed line that represents fire truck access, at least a drivable path that might not be you know impervious material, but it's drivable. Uh, so we're trying to work with that. Um, and we just kind of run out of room. Uh, we'll, we'll continue. We're, we actually started to look at rotating that volume. When you do that, you start losing some of the parking that we've provided right outside central main off, uh, sorry, district, I'll call it district office from now on because that's, everyone knows what that is. So we have parking there, not much, um, but uh, we're trying to preserve as much as we can. Okay. Um, so do you have any other elevation showing the back, like showing like with, cause there's a hill, as we all know, right where the, all that green is, that's where everyone sleds for, during the winter. So like, is there an elevation showing how we're carving into that or are we flattening? Are you expecting to flatten that whole elevation back there to get this school in at this point? Like, I'd so love do to do you mean that. on the lower left where you, um, yeah, right over there. The that's all like in a hill going from the street down towards the field right now. So I just yeah, wonder it, how much actually, of that affects this. Sorry, it actually sorry. resolves before we get to the building. Um, the double, the dashed line represents the outline of the track, roughly. I so, got it. so that hill, hill is here. sort of to the left and down a bit. Right, okay. Uh, we'll, next time we'll have a better underlay of the topo so you can see how that really works. Okay, thanks. You bet. Are there any other questions? Thank you. If, if not, just a couple of quick bullets on um, what, what's going on with the site. Um, so additional geotech is happening next week as um, Doug and Tim are, are very, very aware. Um, we're, continuing to work on developing the fields program um, with the district and continue to work with leadership team on that uh, traffic report. Draft is, draft is expected next week and um, the hydrant flow test has been scheduled for tomorrow. So that is what we've got. Um, we've already talked quite a bit about next week's public forum. Um, we're excited about that. Um, to share progress on the building as well as um, have a discussion about sustainability. 
Uh, we are planning on a safety issues meeting. We think uh, maybe firming up for Tuesday. And I guess I do want to note um, that Joe has asked that you know once these meetings do get scheduled, that you all receive an invite. So if you start to wonder why you're getting a lot of invitations, you can talk to Joe. <laughs> hey, <laughs> but hey, you're hey. always welcome to join the meetings, um, and uh, it's it's definitely helpful to to have people. Um, you know, plugging in and getting a little more detail. So whenever you're able, please do. And um, as Brian already mentioned, we're, we're working with um, Amy, especially to get some additional meetings um, related to the building on the books. So that is what we've got for tonight. Any questions for the team or for Lynn? Helen, real quickly, have we got tomorrow's meeting? Have we got invites to those already? Those really just firmed up today, Chip. Um, so, so we okay. can. I think they are uh, predominantly in person. Is that correct, Brian? That's right. Um, uh, is there a hybrid and option? Did we determine that? We have not set it up that way, but I can certainly add it. Um, so what are the meetings tomorrow? The district offices? district offices, uh, educational technology, uh, and special education. They're gonna run from about, uh, is it 9.30 or 10, Brian? 10 to 12.30. 10 to 12.30. If people are interested, we will be at the school. And if you want to dial in in some way, we can um, try to get that figured out. Um, but sorry about that. That literally got firmed up as of today. And are, so I guess just in the future, are you planning on trying to have these meetings in person or are you going to keep Zooming? It's a mix. It's a mix. Um, I think we're finding that meeting with teachers and staff is um, generally working pretty well to go to the school and sit down and roll out some plans. Um, whereas some of these other meetings that have a much larger um, invitee list have been working pretty well on Zoom or Teams. So it really is a bit of both. So I guess just as we move forward for like the health and wellness and some of these bigger, more broad groups that whether you do a hybrid or whatever, that we should just make them available by Zoom somehow. Okay, okay, yeah. Because those of us that work have to, like, as you've seen, I, like, I drive as I'm watching it, so nobody should be near me. <laughs> Understood. So just quickly, um, just to add a couple of the dates to what uh, Helen had said, um, we do have, a, we have invited Tom Mullen, the town's legal counsel, to the August 31st leadership group meeting. So he's going to join us to answer some of our questions in regards to WCAT and other issues. Um, and then again, we're also still looking to try to, to meet with um, Metro Tech's engineers, hopefully the week of September 6th. Uh, we have no confirmation on that yet, as well as a traffic advisory committee. Um, I know that um, there's meeting, seems to be meetings backed up for the traffic advisory committee. So um, this week of September 6 might be uh, hope, wishful thinking, but we'll continue to try to push for that as well as the page term with BOM. If we can push it back to next week, I mean, this next week we can. If not, we had originally talked to them about be, uh, it being the week of, of September 16th. Mm -hmm. And then just a couple of highlights on other meetings. Um, we said we would work with, the, I believe we moved the school committee meeting that was scheduled for August 30th to September 13th, I believe. I don't know if Doug's still on, but we were looking for some of the other decisions on building systems, um, design and sustainability decisions on September 8th. And then um, after the 31st, we'll have a public forum on where we en ended up with all of these decisions on September 28th. And the cost estimating process will run from September 9th through 30th. But, Phil, you- Lynn. Okay, I'm sorry, Doug, go ahead. I'm sorry, so sorry for interrupting you, Joe, go ahead. Doug can go. 
Okay. Um, Lynn, our, our school committee meeting is September 16th. 16th. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Bill? Just this timeline seemed really aggressive. Like September, we have to pick an exterior. I, I guess I, we, I understand decision on building system, which I think is aggressive because we still need, I feel like a lot of info on that, but the exterior interior and site approval, is that the exterior architecture of the building? It will be the concept. Um, it will continue to evolve through the design development phase. Uh, but we do need a concept to move forward to the estimators at this what, point. What do you mean by that, Lynn? What do you mean concept? Um, an Extent idea of, of materials, materials and glazing. Yeah. That's a huge yeah, and, decision. That's a lot. Yeah, and, and I in. would I would I would add that we're not done at September eighth. Right. Um, we want to have the meeting that um, that that week so that we can establish the scope for the pricing set that's going in the next day. Um, so if we at least have a level of comfort with the direction of the design, right. design will continue for the re remaining, what is it, half of the phase um, un until mid-October uh, anyway. Um, we'll continue to show progress on the exterior and Bill, you'll have a chance to weigh in on all of that, we'll invite you to, um, well, we, we need to have the focus group meeting before um, it's put before the group and, and there should be a recommendation from that group on on the direction. Right, um, and when is, is that all, so it's, when is that focus group meeting again? Because I think I'm part of the site. Focus. That was the one I missed recently. I was on vacation, I think. Yeah, um, we need to get that on the books. We don't have it scheduled. Yeah, um, I just, yeah. I just hope that we'll have a 360, some sort of general idea of what we're going to be approving, like even something to yeah. play with. Like it's tough to look at these elevations and not be able to move it around somehow, like yeah. to fully see, you know what I mean? So I just, I don't know what is expected for a deliverable at this stage to us, Joe or Chip, who's been through many yeah. of these projects, but like, so this comment's probably more for you guys. I don't want to go off track because this is my first big project, The, but like, these are big decisions. I'd like to see all of the school, not just the front, you know, two D drawing. Like, and I'd like to be able to like move it around and stuff. Is that something we can ask for? We're close to being able to show you that, Phil. Um, we will be basically doing walkthroughs of the of the building and the architecture okay. soon. And, and this, is, this is all going to be on the eighth. Like before the eighth, we need to see all this before right. the eighth. It's already August, you know, I, knowing how short summer is because the kids were lamenting today, like that's not a lot of time before we have to make these huge decisions. So I know you're near the end. I, I appreciate that, but we need some time to look at it too, not like the morning before the meeting or the, the meeting. This is a pretty yeah, It's two weeks from today we're looking at. So really by the end of next week, we should have something to review in detail. Are we going to have something? So we need to get that interior exterior focus group meeting on the books. Yeah, and at the so, end of summer. Again, the process. Yep. And so the process is that that group will will do the deep dive and and make a recommendation um, to this group. And are, is the full group going to see something for the presentation on the eighth? Yes. Okay. Can you put up the I slide that has all the? Oh, sorry. Joe. Second, no. Yeah. I just don't want to have the eighth being okay here it is i mean we got to have this well beforehand the people to look at to study and to comment on and not just get it at five o'clock on on the eighth for a seven o'clock meeting it's got to be days before that i don't know how everybody else feels but i'm not going to sit there and I, I i need time and i think by, that by the fifth by the 5th, Joe, Monday the 5th would be the latest. I'd want to see this to have a few days to mull over. It's a holiday. That's Labor Day. Oh, that is Labor Day. Yeah. So, yeah, so really you got, you know, yeah. you get on the 5th, we've got the 6th and but the 7th. So my, my struggle is you guys are thinking that this is the end-all, be-all decision-making process. More than no, anything no, else, no. the decision keeps going and the work keeps going. They've but, just got to concept wise it's the first draft chip is that what you're saying it's yeah like, it's the first yeah, concept it's concept and and 
they're going to have the so if you're really interested in the exterior and all that they're going to have the focus group meeting that we can attend and at that point you'll start hearing all the discussion yeah there's thousands of meetings before it comes to here so I, I understand I, that but what i i also don't want to have it is given it to us at the last minute on the eighth i do want to have some time to look at it my my underlying point was that joe that i just like would like some time i i don't want the concept to be this is my example the water bottle and then after we look at it we realize we should have done the bowl like because now we've already the concept is already here so i i feel i know we're still talking about it but this is an important step. The concept is probably, and I'm not an architect, but I guess a very important step in this process. So I don't want to be rushed. And uh, my last thing is the slide with all the meetings. There was a few 831s, legal counsel. Is someone taking minutes of those meetings? Like, cause I, you know, I works, but I would love to know what goes on at these meetings and can't attend. How do we find this out and have be able to read all that too? And that's it. Thanks. Thank you everyone. Yes, we have meeting minutes on all the meetings, so we can share those. All right, Lynn, is there anything else? That's all I have. Hey, buddy. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. All righty. Good night. Thank you. Night, everybody. Bye bye. Joe, we're not adjourning, right? Yeah. Oh, we are. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought, what's going on with the vacancy? I wanted to ask what was going on with the vacancies. Why we can't? We got to get some people in our committee, like to fill these spots. It's town council that does it. They haven't even met. They they meet once in the. Uh, in August. They met in the beginning of August. Yeah, it's the summer. Yeah. We gotta wait for them. Okay. Gotta wait for them. Another week. My, my bet is they're gonna enter, you know, they're gonna post it and get right. resumes and yeah. Okay. And we're yeah, this that's meeting, what they do. So this meeting's still being recorded. I'll 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 talk to you later, Joe. All righty. All right. Yeah. Okay, take have care. a good night, guys. All right, take care. Phil, thanks for last night. That was a long one. Yeah. Hey, Phil. You lasted longer than I. <laughs> when did it end? Quarter to 10. Oh, I figured I was, I had to put the kids, my wife was in a meeting. So oh, no well, problem. I'm glad we did that. That should have been done a long time ago, but I understand why that sort of, it didn't happen, but. Uh, well, I don't, I don't understand why. Well, I don't understand. Happen. You're but, right. Okay. It this meeting's okay. being recorded. So I'll yeah, talk to you guys later. Okay. No, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll go on record. <laughs> yeah, guys. I'll, I'll gladly right. go on record. Yeah. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night.